What does okay mean? It turns out I've been live this entire time. Well, this is exactly not right the now. Sign of kind of we are live. Well, everyone, welcome to another YouTube live titled Quarantine and Chill. Only we're going to be talking about not chilling during the quarantine and eh, maybe a little bit of chilling here and there because some of us, a couple of us, like to play Call of Duty. But then some of That'd us are only chilling. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much the only chilling. Otherwise, we're working, editing, producing content, working, uh, business development, lots of different things that we're doing. I know some of the stuff that I've been doing during this uh, wonderful time with the quarantine action. So I know you guys really thought through some stuff you wanted to talk about. I know for me, all I do is play Call of Duty. That's all people think I do. And that's pretty much all I've been doing this entire yeah. uh, COVID time. Not really. And drinking rain. But what are some other things that you guys have been doing um, as far as spending time at home? I know obviously we're still coming into work because we're an essential yeah. business. But what are some things you're doing from home when you're not working, even though we all work from home? Does not compute. Does well, not compute. I will say, the reason that we're talking about this is not because we have had a ton of extra time to kill. But we know that a bunch of you guys have. Technically, we've actually been super busy because... Um, well, we, we actually saw sales increase during panic buying. So it wasn't just toilet paper. People actually wanted holsters, stuff. nylon gear, armor, yeah. the good stuff. So, so we've been super busy, but we know that a bunch of you guys have time on your hands. We wanted to talk about using it well, so quarantine and not chill. But uh, you guys have been doing video games. We've been doing a lot of games. And <laughs> we, we, can, we can justify it, though, because... In one regard, we are reaching a different audience than we do on YouTube or on, or on Instagram. No, 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 just, uh, not just the marketing, like personal development stuff. Yeah, well, well we do practice two things. So video games <laughs> are very valuable secrets. for two reasons. One is for comms, communication with your, with your buddies, with your, yeah. with your team, with your squad. Uh, but the other one is uh, just uh, processing, processing speed and being able to see things in your peripheral and quickly move to them, hand-eye coordination, that kind of stuff. I'm sure Luke will still talk more about that as, in terms of its, uh, how it translates to shooting because it does translate to shooting. Or so. doing anything. Uh, it's been, yeah, well, there's lots of studies out there showing that fast-paced video games requiring decision-making do help. Um, other things, I know for me, it really helps with computer speed as I'm editing or photo editing, moving my cursor around, um, going through all of that. So I play video games for a lot of different reasons, not just because it's fun, but also just to keep me fast at editing, photo editing, Premiere, you know, all that good stuff that I do and just navigating my computer, moving the cursor around, eyes lead, cursor follows, that kind of thing, uh, being precise. It's actually pretty cool how many benefits there are to playing fast-paced video games, uh, reaction time and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, the latest Call of Duty uh, introducing Warzone, that's the main reason we've been uh, playing a lot because it's totally rad, and so we play that a good amount. Did he mention he and worked uh, on that game? Because if not, I'll do it for him. Oh, so, thank yeah. you. No, no, You're welcome. Thank you. Come up. Just give it, a, give it a couple more minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. I know something that I've been working on um, a lot just from a, a company level is there's a lot of management uh, that we are currently you know, uh, focusing on and trying to figure out as the company has been getting larger and as we focus on some things, some things kind of get uh, lost in some of that expansion. So I've been trying to focus on some of that, which a lot of it's just sitting down, thinking through what's going on, looking at some of the company files, uh, having some meetings when I come in with some of the people about what's going on, uh, what can be improved, what can be uh, fixed, uh, systems that can happen. Uh, but a lot of that just happens from home where I'm thinking through uh, you know, what does the company look like right now? What does the chain of command look like? What are people most likely you know, seeing or um, how do they, what, what issues are they starting to recognize with how big the company's getting? And a lot of that's just from home. I'm sitting in the living room, you know, eating dinner or doing whatever. It's, it's not necessarily something that has to happen at the office, something that has to happen at work. Um, having a good think is important. And I think a lot of people uh, don't think about that, yeah. actually. And I think that is yeah. a good thought, Har Har. Now, that actually, I think, <laughs> communicates an important principle about kind of this concept of chilling. Because the issue is not exactly what you're doing, like even what game you're playing. Yeah. There's two ways to play a game. You can have your brain switched on while you do it and figure out what you can be learning and improving in regardless of what that game actually is. Or you can switch your brain off and just do whatever. And I see people who 
who, who go through life with one of these two mentalities. And they can be guys who are improving themselves and learning skills while playing games. And I can also see people who are just coasting even when they're doing something productive. They could be so much more productive if they just switch their brain on, switch their brain on, stop chilling, and try to figure out what am I learning from this? How can I improve doing this? And uh, so you guys are talking about kind of fast twitch reflexes stuff, but there's a lot of other stuff that you can pick up yeah. if you put your mind to it and actually do the work. I know it's not fun, but in the middle of the game or whatever, do the work of trying to figure out what can I take away from this. Yeah, one of the things, just to piggyback on that, one of the things that is easy for us to overlook um, is just doing things to get us inspired to do other things. And that sounds mm -hmm. kind of weird, but I'll flush that out. So I understand that we have a unique job in that we create content, we shoot things, we do really cool stuff. But after you do it for a while, it becomes pretty bland and boring. It yep. becomes like sure any is. other job. So if you're not careful, your job can just become mundane, even though it's like fun for you guys to watch. And from your perspective, it looks like all we do is run around and shoot guns so, all the so time. So what you're Pretty saying much. is your life is so much like old video games that you need <laughs> new video games. Yes, <laughs> exactly. But no, our, like, our lives are real, like early Call of Duty, so now we need the new one. Which is funny because we're like, hey, we need to, uh, uh, hey, we could build this gun out to be like the Modern Warfare 2 gun. Which is but, old. but really, whenever it comes down to it, like watching movies and playing new video games and like, doing all that stuff, it gives us ideas for fresh ways to communicate old truths or fresh ways to, to show you guys shooting drills and things like that. So that's one of the big reasons why I like movies. Um, I am a sucker for a good story, but like, you know, we have uh, Cyberpunk getting ready to come out, the new game that's getting ready to come out, and that gives us tons of ideas on like videos we can make or guns that we can build out. Or, yeah, aesthetic. So that's one of the biggest things for me and, and Granted, we have a more creative job. We have a weird job. job more creative hard. job than a lot of people. But however, however, I will say, a lot of people are in a, are in a position now to where they're going to have to start getting creative mm -hmm. to Absolutely. be paid. Yeah. So maybe you should look at, it might be a good idea to look at it like that. Like now, you may be out of work, you may be out of a job, and you got to come up with something. Mm -hmm. you got to make your own job, which is essentially what all of us did. Yeah. So this is, and this is a really important point. I know now is stressful time, people have time on their hands, people are using that time to chill, but now is, if you're off of work, now is your opportunity to get ready to take advantage of the opportunities that come next. Yeah. Because uncertain times are difficult. They're hard, they can be super rough, but in rough times there have always been new opportunities. So using this time to get caught up on pop culture versus using this time to get prepared for what comes next is important. Um, on video games, I remember reading an article in Wired Magazine a long time ago. This is back when Wired Magazine good was still a good magazine yeah. Yeah. and not a terrible website. Um, but the article was from a sports writer, and he was explaining that his generation of uh, football players, and I forget the year, is totally different than the previous generation of football players because of the Madden video games. Mm. The, and it wasn't as football players, obviously lots of people were playing that game, but there was a generation of football players coming up that had spent so much time in that game, even though it is unlike being on the field, they were able to run play after play after play in the game. And he said the new version, they're the new generation of football players, they see the game differently. It's not a first person game that they're playing. In their mind's eye, they're seeing the first person bird's eye view of the entire field. They're... There are players who normally would not think strategically. It's the quarterbacks that spend all the time going through game film and actually learning to think right. uh, tactically and strategically about the game. But because everybody had so many hours in the Madden football games, everybody started thinking that way. And he was like, yeah, it's a total shift in the way that the game is played, but in a small way. So it doesn't really That's matter really cool. what you're doing. Uh, Game-wise, if you have your brain turned on, there's things you can you can learn and take away from it. So, what are some other things that you might have picked up? From well, game? another thing, another thing that I think is important to that I would encourage if you are going to play video games, which obviously a lot of people in my generation are down for, and I totally understand why. Is I also generally only play video games when my buddies are on. Um, I don't really like playing by myself very much, so I use it as a time to talk to them. Um, I also don't really call my friends on the phone and just chat. We text, but we don't like call and chat. 
Uh, so that's my time to kind of catch up with them, find out what's going on. And I actually had a really good conversation with Grand Thumb. Uh, we were on last week, and he jumped on. Oh my gosh, you know Grand yeah. Thumb? I do. Oh my I do. goodness. Yeah. What? Shameless, shameless little plug and uh, name drop right there. But he got on, and we started talking. It was in the afternoon, and he had some time. And uh, the game actually went down. The servers went down for uh, Call of Duty. So we just sat there and talked for like 20 minutes. And then we got back into the action and kept playing. But we were able to catch up on some of the stuff that he's doing, some of the videos. We talked about some videos we want to do together. Um, so huh. we actually, Collabs. I like to, I know, right? I like to use uh, being in Discord and getting with the buddies as a time to like talk to them, find out what's going on. And usually we're talking about work stuff too, yeah. um, industry stuff as well. So that's a big thing for me. Like I don't want to just get on and mindlessly play a game by myself. Um, unless there's some other purpose behind it, like I'm checking out the aesthetic of a certain game, I'm checking out a certain thing that may, you know, lead into the marketing for the company. Uh, but if it is a time to talk to, you know, Drew, talk to Grand Thumb, talk to some of my other buddies, or there's a couple uh, streamers that I've actually been talking to that I'm hoping to play with to kind of learn more about the video game industry and their sort of world being competitive, you know, Call of Duty players and stuff like that. Uh, Crim6 is one of the guys that I'll be playing with soon and kind of, oh, I got to interview him on what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, there's, there's a lot of different reasons you can obviously play video games and I think there's really productive ones versus just sitting on the couch and, you know, playing a mindless, uh, like slow arcade game by yourself and vegging mm -hmm. out. There's yeah. varying levels of productivity when you waste your time, waste yeah, your time. For sure. It's and I, I was going to say that like you can redeem the time and do two things at once, or you can just switch your brain off and do nothing. You yep. brought up a really cool point that I just want to touch on real quick. You talked about how the Madden, Madden video games brought up a whole new generation of football players. So Call of Duty and shooting games have done the same thing for 100%. shooters. 100%. It is significant. Are you going to use the T word? What's the T word? Are you going to talk? I know a couple different ones. Tactics? Oh, no, no. I'm not going to. No, I wouldn't dare go there. I mean, okay, so unworthy. Good. Um, I can't possibly understand anything more than just simple fundamental. So um, okay. that's so reserved careful. for people who aren't dirty civilians. Um, Potato peelers. But I will trucks, say, truck teaching drivers. someone to shoot well that has played shooter video games is significantly easier than teaching someone to yes. shoot that has that does not play games at all. And it's not just a hand-eye coordination thing. It is a People have put, who have played a lot of shooting video games, they already have visualized what it's like to shoot a gun. They know how to aim up the front sight and the rear sights, or in some cases, the dot. They like they just get it. They know it. the sight picture. Exactly. They, they understand the sight picture. Yeah. So they know what is desired. They, 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 they can begin with the end in mind because they've been watching the end in mind yeah. on the screen this whole time. So there's a lot of stuff that translates really well, and that's one of them. Yeah, I definitely love when I'm teaching classes using uh, video game stuff as examples because usually 80% of my students understand exactly what I'm talking about, about driving the gun yep. to the target consistently every time where when I right click ADS, bring the gun up from you know low ready or high ready, uh, that sight picture is in the same spot every time as it is in a video game. Uh, dragging recoil down, like as soon as I start communicating those concepts, uh, gamers in my classes at least, they get it a lot sooner than folks that just don't. So that's a fun, fun point there as well. I've got a funny story about that. So whenever we were in Vegas, it was after you had like ditched us to go hang out with Redacted. And uh, ah, right. um, it, was, it was me, Mojo, Grimm, uh, uh, and a couple of other shooters. And uh, Steve was there. And we're running through these drills, and we're getting bored, so we're like, all right, let's do, let's do two-man drills. Like, let's do two different, you know, courses of fire at the same time, but you have to communicate, which is not something that we do a lot of. Civilians. Oh, uh, yeah, because we're dirty civilians. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the game, in video games, we're communicating all the time. So at first, me and Steve started running these drills, and we were not talking to each other. I was shooting my targets, he was shooting his targets, and that was it. And then Mojo was like, dude, why don't you just, why, why are you two not talking? I was like, well, I don't really know what to say. Tactically. I don't have that kind of tactically. training. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Mojo said, well, you communicate. He's like, just do the same thing you do in video games. Because we play with Mojo all the time. And, like, we communicate really well in video games. Like, we understand Slow how to move as a team, how to tell each other what, what, what the plans are and, like, when to move, when to push, when to pull back, all that stuff. And so me and Steve just started talking like that. And it really is, in terms of communicating, mm -hmm. it really is that simple. Yeah. So I, think that I get a lot out of it. That's point. just me. Yeah. Now, I don't get as much out of video game analogies because when I last played video games, uh, guns didn't have recoil. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real tournament. It was just yeah. doot, 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 doot. 
Yeah. Um, there was no aiming down sides. It was all from the hip with just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. a, yeah. 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 And there were only eight pixels. So. Oh, it's true. true. Newer video games have gotten better at communicating to people gun stuff. And I'll straight up say that the Call of Duty games got me into guns. Uh, they got me into guns at a very different level than, for example, David was getting me into guns. Uh, where I was shooting, you know, 22s, I was shooting different things, and then I was playing Call of Duty and seeing all these different attachments, all this different equipment. And yeah, I was becoming it, more interested in it. And it gives you a nice context, bigger context. I wanted yeah, to buy yeah. certain guns because of it, and I would say that Call of Duty is the result. And battle, the Battlefield series as well, I'm getting a lot of new people into firearms. And I think the latest Call of Duty especially is going to help a lot with that um, and with gun handling, just gun handling skills in general uh, with the next generation. And the other thing cool. is, you know, scars wouldn't even still be around because no one would be buying them for <laughs> video games. And so, an ACR wouldn't have yeah. gone anywhere. And well, uh, it wouldn't actually, uh, except for Desert Modern Warfare Eagles, 2. Desert Uzis, Eagles. I mean, yeah. we could make a significant list. Actually, yeah. oh, Uzis, Uzis are cool. Uzis are cool. I kind of want a few. We're going to be doing some stuff with Uzis, yeah. hopefully, if we can get them full auto. Can I say that on YouTube? Of course we can okay, get them full auto. We just make no, no, them no. Can auto. we say it on YouTube? Eh, we just want I mean, this one's cool here's, the, here's, here's the fact, fellas. You can pretty much do anything you want in real life. The only limitations are on YouTube. The only limitation is your mind. Well, I was going to say, uh, excellent point about communication. I would say that one of the most useful things, whether you're playing a video game, whether, or whether you're doing a, a, an actual task in real life, or whether you're doing something that is productive, if you decide ahead of time, here's something that I'm going to improve on. If you're running a drill, if you're building a holster, if you are editing a video in Premiere, if you are playing a video game, if you say, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to do this thing. And today, right now, with this drill or with this project, I'm going to get better at X. You actually think ahead of time what you're going to work on. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to work on my communication. I'm going to get better at communication in this round. I'm going to work on my recoil control. I'm going to do better by the end of these drills. Uh, right now, I'm in the middle of a, uh, a premiere edit, and I said, this one is going to be, I'm going to do music. I'm going to try to make music interesting in this and not just drop it in the bottom. Like, give myself yeah. a job that is going to be a challenge and stretch me. Um, I think that is really important to do, even if all you're doing is playing a video game. Yeah. I sometimes write down, if, when I know something yeah. bad's happened, or uh, we talk about it at the end of a round, uh, we talk about what happened, and we try to fix it on the next. We get pretty... I don't want to say serious, but we're not just doing it to melt our brains. Like we want to do it well. We want to be competitive. We want to be better than average. And I would say that mm. mental yeah. process where it should be everywhere in life should definitely apply to when you are having fun, rotting your brain. You should still be trying to be above average and the best when you're doing those things as well. That's and my I fully experience. agree. And, and if you can find a way that it's going to apply in real life, like getting better at communication in a video game, that also is going to improve your communication in real life. Yeah. Doing it with people that you want to build relationships with already and then working on your fine motor control and your multi-target tracking and your moving target brain processing. If you can do all those things at the same time, then yeah, it's hard to argue that video games are a completely wasted time. But if you don't do any of that stuff and you just veg out, you are wasting your time. All right, so enough sure. about games. We talk about games a lot. Some people are going to be like, T-Rex Arms isn't the game channel. Well, yeah, we're, yeah. we're not. However, I would say that probably a lot of people subscribing to us on YouTube watching our videos are gamers. But you're right, we're not a gaming channel. <laughs> not yet. Just kidding, we won't be. Um, but what are, some other, what are some other things that you guys are doing right now when you're at home, when you're doing whatever... And honestly, there's probably some questions in here we can start hitting as well, and or discussion any, at least. Are there any good questions, Drew? I didn't. Think uh, so. I haven't been monitoring them too much. Uh, just thoughts on the virus in general, things okay. like that, which there's a lot of conjecture at this point, anyway. Of course. So um, let's try to stay on topic then. I, I will say it is really fascinating to see the difference between YouTube comments on a live and Instagram comments during a live. They're very different. Very They're very different. Uh, I talked about that on my last Instagram live. Yeah. Which you can um, view at Lucas Trex Arms. And Trex or, Arms should start doing them too. Just a shameless plug right there. Yeah. So, um, by the way, uh, we do value input, even though I just threw all of your comments under the bus. We do value your input. We are trying to figure out um, how to use YouTube well and not just use it as a way to do mindless entertainment. So, uh, let us know. Uh, I'm reading books, um, I'm listening to books. 
And listening to books yeah. is good. I think they're the same thing. Yeah. It's harder to underscore in an audio book. I have a three hour commute every day, yes. so yeah. I listen to a lot. I have a seven. But that's just me. <laughs> There's gun questions coming in. There's some gun questions coming in, I'm sure. Um, so books, movies, television, I think that you can apply your brain. It's very easy to read a book, have it be a mindless book, and not improve your mind. Or you can watch a movie and actually think, I want to, I want to actually think about this and apply my mind to these things. Even if it's a fictional movie, even if it's a scenario that's completely unrealistic, you can still say, is there some takeaways here? Is there something that I can actually use as a seed for an idea that mm -hmm. I can build upon? Or is there um, something that I can actually apply to something that I've been thinking about or something that I want to do or something that I see in the world around me? So I know that a bunch of people, as the, uh, as the virus is spreading around the world, people started watching Outbreak and Contagion and The Stand and various I'll, other I'll rewatch Contagion. Okay. I did. I was like, was I hated his... this whenever, I was so bored by it whenever it came out and I watched it like when I was younger. I watched it this time and I was like, oh yeah. Paint All right, down. let's do it, yeah. Well, okay, so this is this is interesting. And obviously, um, I, I remember Outbreak better because it had the awesome helicopter chase. Oh yeah. And, and Contagion was super boring. But, it was. Um, <laughs> if you have a friend uh, who can tell you, uh, who actually knows the material, and can tell you how accurate, accurate that is, I'm not saying watch those movies and use them to inform your actual thinking processes regarding virology and epidemiology. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying think through some of the stuff that's in the movie and how it might apply. But I would argue, because uh, we talked about this earlier, get ready for what happens next. Get ready for the opportunities to happen next. What's more interesting to me right now than uh, zombie movies and apocalyptic movies like The Road or Book of Eli or whatever is <gasps> so good. rebuilding movies. Sure. So like, I'm, my plan for the future is not to just put on my fingerless gloves in my backpack and hit the road with James <laughs> and just be like, nope, there's no future for us, son. We're just kind of machete people. Stumble into a basement full of cannibals. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning Hopefully to not do that. But, <laughs> That's good. Um, even a movie or a book like Swiss Family Robinson, you can watch that. I mean, yeah. even the Disney version, which it's pretty good. It's actually kind of awesome. Yeah, it's not well, bad. James I mean, is new. We grew up on that, and it might be a little more corny than we remember it being. Oh, it is so corny, but it's also like super awesome. It's one of those movies where exactly. a lot of it is corny, exactly. and yet <laughs> everything that's happening on screen is done for real. Real animals fighting real stuntmen, building real actual tree houses. Um, just like watching even a movie like that that I happen to be watching <clears throat> with James, thinking through like, if we were starting from scratch, we would not just put on our fingerless gloves and go machete people. Like we would be building stuff. We would be planning stuff. We would be trying yeah. to take whatever it was that we had lost and rebuild that. Because even when things are going well, we're trying to build beyond yeah. what we have. So, so even a movie like that, that is corny yeah. and has that Disney kid in it, and a hilarious sound effect when a log hits a pirate on a head. Which, and the Wilhelm. And the Wilhelm might be in there. But I do, on, so on yeah. that, Isaac's talking about rebuilding, and I did see a question come in that if you're thinking about starting a business in May, and should you? Well, and there's also people asking about the conspiracy mm, yeah. theories surrounding the virus. Regardless of that, regardless of whether it was a weapon or it was a thing or whatever, regardless of all of that, all those conspiracies, we can definitely take from what's going on as... Certain businesses are being affected. Some things are most likely not going to be the same, at least in 2020. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you're thinking about starting a business, if I were thinking of starting another business right now, and I'm always thinking about businesses, there's some things I would not do right now based on the media, based on you know what people are saying, what people are thinking. I think luxury type businesses that require being around people are going to be down in 2020. Uh, I would not think about starting a cruise line. Um, you know, a cruise line. That or new, uh, that new replica Titanic, the Titanic Two. Probably that may a not bad do idea. well. <laughs> yeah, things that are straight up uses of luxury <laughs> money and may put you with a lot of people. Probably a bad business to start right now. However, there's other businesses that, like kind of like Isaac said, when one thing goes down, one thing kind of comes up. Mm -hmm. um, those are the things to kind of look for, where you can offer a service, and maybe it's a type of service where you're not interacting with other people. So people are more willing to do it. Um, I noticed with like Pizza Hut um, weeks ago, they had a contactless type of delivery, mm -hmm. and there are certain services like Netflix is up 14 million subscriptions based on a headline I saw yesterday, or 16 million, I think it was 14. So there's definitely some things that regardless of 
whether the virus is as bad as people think it is, or it was a weapon, or it is a government, who knows, whatever it is, there's going to be some stuff that is mm -hmm. yeah. going to be happening no matter what. We're already seeing it affect the economy. And I would say absolutely start a business. If it's the kind of business that can still do well mm -hmm. in a time where people don't want to be around other people, or maybe they still can, you know, they can justify spending some money in that area. Um, cheap entertainment is always going to be a thing. It's going to keep being a thing. Yes. Um, expensive entertainment, uh, like a, even escape rooms, stuff like that. Those will probably go down. Streaming services go up. Mm -hmm. uh, cheaper video games are probably going up. Um, really expensive high-end AAA games, they may go down, although probably not. Um, but things yeah. that involve people, I probably wouldn't start a business in 2020 if it was a thing that required groups. I probably wouldn't do that. And I will say, example. we've got some precedent on this. Um, my yeah. biggest thing that I'm thinking through and planning about regarding the situation we're in is economic, not pandemic. Correct. I think it's great to go back and look at what happened in the Great Depression. And so for, for as we talk about books we're recommending, there's some, I would recommend some depression books. Wrap your mind around kind of what that looked like. Because what Lucas is talking about absolutely happened. Expensive entertainment like shows and theater and live music went down. Gone. But nickel and dime tickets to uh, movie theaters went way up. Uh, expensive, uh, bake, you know, bakeries went out of business. Penny candy, uh, extremely popular. So people went towards those cheaper entertainments because they had less money for luxury. Now, my we're telling people not to chill. My Sorry. favorite depression book was No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Well, it's it is depressing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sorry. That was sorry. I rattled. I got dad jokes. Thing. I got dad jokes now. So yes, I, gotta I interject oh, from time dad to time. Jokes are the best. Yeah. Lucas, know. if you ever become a dad, you have no idea how dad jokes are until we have I'm not, four year old. Yeah. It gets so much I'm better. Never gonna use dad jokes. <laughs> um, but uh, we were talking about um, applying your mind to stuff. So there's a couple of things that the the fact that Netflix subscriptions are up, Disney Plus subscriptions are up, all streaming stuff is up. Um, these are most likely a bunch of people who are not getting ready to take advantage of opportunities. These are people who are taking this opportunity to be home, to consume media and be amused. And I get that. This is a stressful, uncertain time. It is far more appealing to Netflix and chill than to actually make plans for the future. Learn yeah. and chill. Yeah. But there are so many people that are just consuming media right now. You really need to be ready to help those folks by creating opportunities for them, and you will be able to take advantage of all kinds of opportunities if you do that. So I would recommend, even though there's, I'm sure, Netflix shows that are more fun than reading books about the Great Depression. Um, uh, I'll recommend one off the top of my head. Um, Hard Times by Studs Terkel is a whole bunch of interviews with farmers. What's his name? Studs Terkel. He's a... It's such an awesome name. It's Studs kind of awesome Terkel. Name. He's kind of an awesome guy. Uh, He's no longer living, but uh, actually, weird trivia point. My great-grandfather is interviewed in that book because he was a farmer in Iowa, and it was rough Stop. times. So the book is called Hard Times. It was really hard times. It's a very interesting book to read. Another one that you should Google is uh, Children of the Dust Bowl, which is kind of an awesome book because there's all these kids with no school, and the community builds a school, and the school that they build is so much better than real school. It's... It's I can't imagine cool that book. being the case. Could yeah. we possibly make schools better than they Isn't are now? It, yeah. Mm. I, I, I am just going to go on record and say the best thing about what's going on right now is all the schools being closed. Yes. Completely as agree. bad as that situation is, it could always be worse with more public school stuff. And oh, this brings me to another point. As Lucas was talking about business opportunities, <clears throat> where we're seeing the greatest failures is centralized stuff which means that the greatest opportunities are decentralized stuff. So decentralized manufacturing uh, is going to, I think there's going to be a lot of demand for it. Partly because it could take a while for the really centralized supply chains to come back. But even if they do, I think there's a lot of people who are just not going to trust those in the same way. They're going to yeah. be far more interested in buying locally from a small manufacturer than internationally. There's, so yeah, and get been, those wheels moving on that right now. There's been predictions. I saw a comment in here that I'd agree with that said public entertainment isn't going to be the same for the next five years. I would agree with that. I don't know if it's five, but I would agree that that sort of thing, there's people that are saying that handshaking may go away for a while. And what's interesting to note is 
a lot of these changes we're having in our society today are things that a bunch of other countries already have that yeah. are normal to them. Um, some of the countries over in Asia, they already have a lot of these policies, and it's because of viruses and pandemics that they've had in the past. So we're currently in the process of changing, and whether it's for the right reasons or not, because this virus might be as bad or worse or not as bad as we might think, they're happening nonetheless. Um, we are both, all of us, violating the six-foot rule. But, oh, totally. Uh, but be that as it may, but I'm, we I'm also sure people are reporting us right now. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. But we also have like rules in place every was, day we, that we get yeah. our temperatures taken every day and stuff like that. So I have some we're not lines sick. over and you know never see them again. Yeah. No. Well, uh, <laughs> so you guys have a little bit more business experience than I do in terms of starting businesses. But I will say. Now may not be a good time to start a business, but it doesn't mean you can't work oh, on I your business. I would say now is a great time to so, start a business because a lot of the federal agencies that do the paperwork are closed. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how legal that business may be, but, um, but it doesn't mean you can't work on a skill set that's yeah. going to be valuable when this is all said and done. Like editing, uh, learning to edit. So, so Lucas and I, we game with this dude who is, is an instructor. He's a firearms instructor. He had just kind of started his business recently like within the past year or two and hit. then this hit so he's not able to do classes he can't really he's very limited he's not doing anything he's stuck at home literally all day and so i know that he's taken uh it upon himself to get better at editing videos this is an opportunity yeah. for him to take what he knows and communicate it in a different form so when this is all over and when things go back to a new normal It'll maybe awesome. he will have this new skill set in his pocket so you know, we're, it's funny that we're in isolation right now because when you isolate and you focus on certain skill sets, mm -hmm. you can much, much more easily master them. So I would say pick something, not 50 different things. Pick something, get good at it. Yeah. If you can't do that now, when, I don't know, it's like, this is the perfect opportunity to do basically that. Basically what you should want is like in the first Captain America, you're the little skinny guy before uh, Corona hits and you get into your you little pod and you come out just totally jacked I love, after the virus. Dude, can we get you it's a pod? Basically, so you're basically like me at the beginning and then you come out. Oh my goodness. Like, what if you started dressed? working out when this happened? Oh my goodness. I'd be huge. <laughs> Probably not. I would eat more and yeah, that's not gonna happen. But I think that that, that principle of, of Bettering yourself is incredibly important. And look, let's be honest, people should be doing that anyway. Yeah. And this is something that you talk about in relation to firearm training all the time. This is something that we have tried to do as, uh, as a family, as a company, as individuals for a long time. We just haven't really talked about it because, I don't know, I mean, you talk about it in regards to firearm training, but yeah. now there's kind of an opportunity for us to talk about it more um, because I think we're actually headed for some kind of rough times. And the best possible thing for you to do for yourself is to start building those skill sets and have more things in your tool bag coming out. But it's not just for you. That's going to make everything better for the people around you. That's going to make things better for the economy as a whole. The best thing you can do, period, uh, is to start building out your tool bag of stuff. Because we don't really know what 2021 is going to look like. Um, but there's certain skills that are almost certainly going to be valuable and having more skills than you have now is definitely going to be valuable. And so um, one thing on that, obviously we're, I'm currently in the process of planning a dry fire video. This is obviously something people talk about a lot. And I was messaging uh, Christian Saylor. He's an up and coming super pro comp shooter. He just won uh, open nationals. I think it was, and he posted a video dry firing on Instagram and it was a, it was a time lapse essentially. And I DM'd him and said, Hey, how many minutes? How many minutes was that you're dry firing? He said 15 minutes. He said, if I dry fire 15 minutes a day, and he's using the same gun, so he does have a little bit of an advantage just doing that because I shoot like 50 different guns. He said, when I dry fire 15 minutes a day, it's, it's amazing what you get out of it. You have the perfect sight picture every time, the perfect reload every time, and he's just doing 15 minutes. So if Christian Saylor, who is an up-and-coming pro dude who's like crushing everyone in the USPSA world, and you are stuck at home for an additional nine hours because you can't go to work, even if you just did one hour of dry fire and you split it up into multiple segments, you would be pretty mm -hmm. amazing as far as consistent sight picture, transitioning to the next target, working your reloads, going from the draw, you start over and you do it again. Um, that's something, and that skill, kind of like Isaac said, at really hard times, and that can fluctuate. Mm -hmm. Let's say things get 
really bad to the point where you're actually using like your rifles and you have them for the reason you're actually using them for the reasons mm -hmm. that you own them. Um, getting some dry fire in before all that happens is probably a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, getting way better, way more comfortable with your weapons. Uh, so something that I'm working on is a video going over some of the dry fire drills that I do and why they're helpful. Uh, but that's something that if you're you know, watching Netflix or you're watching a movie or something, there's no reason you can't be dry firing at the same time. You literally can dry fire at people's faces on the screen as they're moving around and work your target transitions and mo do your reps, do whatever. Yeah. Uh, dry fire is probably, if you're into guns, which most likely you are being on this channel, watching this live right now, um, you can dry fire your rifles, your handguns, whatever, mm -hmm. You know, 45 minutes a day. I think JJ yeah. Rakaza does like 45 minutes a day. Christian Saylor does like, I think he's told me like 15, sometimes more. I used to dry fire about half an hour a day. I don't do as much uh, anymore. Uh, right now, I'm still going to the range three days a week. Uh, I should be dry firing, and I'm going to try to start getting back into 15 yeah. minutes a day, probably around dinner time. But um, During dinner time? It can be. If I'm cooking yeah. a steak, I've done it before. I have my belt on, and I'm just yeah. doing stuff while I'm cooking. <laughs> Uh, or working my stupid shotgun and quad loading, so stupid. Uh, but that's definitely something you guys should be doing. And whether times get worse mm -hmm. or better, uh, you may need to use that skill yeah. and you should have it. So I, I would say that I, I'm doing this to some extent, but I think we should all be kind of preparing for worst case scenarios, medium case scenarios, and the good scenarios. And let me tell you, even if I knew for a fact that everything was just going to be magically better tomorrow, there still is so much work to do in decentralizing industry yeah. in this country and building businesses in this country, and I still want to be a better shooter, even if everything is magically perfect tomorrow. So be making lists and things through some of these things. Um, on the business front, now would also be a good time to be reading some books on economics because I think we're about to see a whole bunch of economic systems fail, and having a little bit of a baseline, having a little bit of a foundation on on, uh, on good economic theory, I think will be very helpful in understanding what's going on and planning for the future, so. Is there anything you'd recommend? Uh, Thomas Sowell has a book called Basic Economics, which is a big chunky book, but it's very readable. Um, there is a book called Economics in One Lesson by a guy named Hazlitt. The first chapter is the one lesson, and then he has other chapters explaining why what he has said is true. That is a free PDF that you can get. It's an older book. Uh, I would absolutely uh, recommend that. And even if you only read the first okay. chapter, I think you'll understand a bunch of stuff. So history and economics is stuff that I think is going to be super, uh, super useful to be um, studying at this point. That's a great way to, to be able to handle the future is to know more about the past. And I think that the major shakeups we're going to see in the future are going to be economic related. And there's going to be a bunch of experts telling you the best way to get out of this situation is we print infinite money and then we just spend it on nothing. Uh, and that's how you get out of debt. So like... Uh, the people that say people that are also will, people that don't run businesses and don't know how the economy works, but whatever. But there are people who are professional economists. So you need to build some of your own economic understanding, and I would recommend books by Austrian uh, economics guys. The School of Austrian Economics is where I would recommend that you would, uh, you would start for, for building that. And I think that's going to be super handy, because I, I predict trouble but I guarantee bad economic commentary coming in the future. This is interesting. What, so, why do you predict trouble? I, I predict trouble. I don't just disagree. Because, uh, well, there's several. Do you, where do you want to start at the bottom? People are sinful. <laughs> That's true. People yeah. are sinful, which means that they're greedy, which means they build economic systems that give them an advantage. Did you ever see the movie? Um, uh, it's not the big short. It's the margin, it's margin call. call. Yes, I love margin call. So there's a scene in there where one of the big-time investment banker guys is like, no, the system is unfair. All of my clients pay me to put my thumb on the scale. What happens when I take my thumb off the scale is things get really fair really quickly, and then it's not cool, which is kind of what the movie is about, is the 2008 thing. So we have built economic systems that basically kick the can down the road for our kids. Like we have... You know, a lot of us personally have gone into debt. Uh, institutions have gone into debt, and our nation as a whole has gone into debt. And it's just like, well, we'll pay for it later. 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 At we'll some, point, later. You're gonna have At some to. point, that all comes due. Um, yep. As possible, it could be this year, next year, another ten years, five. We don't know that for yeah. sure. But the fact of the matter is, it is going to happen some day, yeah. some form of correction. And the longer it goes, the worse it's going to get. And when you have a system that's that's weak, 
stresses on it like pandemics or just turning the economy Test off for a while severely that stresses things out so i'm not saying that terrible things are going to happen i'm saying they're pretty likely yeah. but people telling you lies about the economy i guarantee that's going to happen <laughs> yeah so i would study sure. this out and the fallout is going to be worse than what we're experiencing now yeah. whatever comes from this yeah. Yes. It's going to be worse than what it is now. I think it's going to be rough. Now, I will say, I think that the curve is actually be kind of flattened because what's going to happen is businesses that are the closest to like actual cash flow are going to run into hard times really soon. And then businesses that have a cushion are going to run into trouble a little later. And then businesses and people that have, have a certain number of weeks of unemployment benefits or, or whatever guaranteed by the government they're going to run into trouble whenever those many weeks of insurance money run out. Like I think that it's going to yeah. be kind of a staggered thing, but uh, yeah, I, I read some books. I would say I'd say read some books. Um, and if you're going to watch for, movies, Margin yeah. Call is a good one. It's an interesting take. My brother-in-law, who understands financial stuff, is like, "Oh, it was so simplified. Like I could barely." And I was like, "What were they talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> He was like, nah, it's just like simplified to the point of like a crayon drawing. <laughs> That's what some of us need. Exactly. So, yeah, learning a little bit more about how the current system works is important. But I would say even more important than that is getting some fundamentals on capitalism and basic economics from people who are uh, Austrian school economists. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Thomas Sowell and Hazlitt, I forget his first name, who did the economics in one lesson. Uh, check it out. There's, there's free books online about that. Hi, nice to be have. I think we have another 15 We have all so. the minutes. I'm we, fine out. This guy's saying you start with your podcast. Uh, yes. We've thought about it. We have. I've thought about doing uh, one of my own, but T-Rex, uh, the goal This kind is, of is right now. The yeah. goal is that what we're doing right now uh, that we would do weekly on Wednesdays in the afternoon would sort of become the T-Rex podcast. Uh, since this is long-form content that doesn't mm -hmm. really rely on visuals, although we do have some really cool guns in here. Uh, this is something that can very easily Kinda be cool. listened to while driving. Um, and yeah. then you don't have to deal with looking at our mugs. But um, that's that's something that we were talking about. I know I'll have one in future, but no idea when that's actually starting. Yeah, let us know so. what you guys think. Because we, uh, we have talked about doing more media this way, more media that way. Part of the reason we're doing this right now is because so many of you are at home with extra time. Uh, I ran an Instagram poll and 60-ish percent of my guys said they have way more time because of lockdown. Yeah. So yeah. we decided, let's try to make this happen, but let us know if this works out, if weekly works out, if an hour works out, if you actually appreciate it, or if you would rather have... A podcast. Well, or I was going to say, if you don't actually want this free-form, improvised, 15 minutes late, shoot-from-the-hip stuff, or if you actually want the tight edited videos. We are very curious what you are interested in, um, and we have really limited time. Like, the amount of time that we have to create content is limited because we're busy doing other stuff. I will yeah. say, if we had podcast form, then I could fiddle with things like this magazine. Y'all wouldn't have to see. You can it. do it on video. Fun. It's fine. I'm just waiting for you to drop it. I'm glad it's Woo! on. I'm glad it's on an SRO because the last time you did that did not end well. You know, it ended we, in six hundred dollars down the drain. It was like a Linux te tech tip. A Linux tech tip. Hey, video. I'll say yeah. anything that I break, I don't care because it's a learning point. So. So everything oh is a learning experience. Some are more expensive. <laughs> That's the than point you were supposed to get from that. Everything's a learning experience. Uh, you right. know, it's great if you can learn from other people's learning experiences. That helps. Yeah. That helps. Learning from other people's business failures because their business shuts down instead of yours mm -hmm. is great. But yeah. other things in your own business are great as well. And, and, we're, and we're learning some stuff about business too through all of this. Uh, I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more. Right now, we haven't been significantly affected except for the fact that. We've had to find new suppliers for a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's been, supply and, chains have been yes. our biggest issue. more American made, well not even just American made, but finding manufacturers that rely on American infrastructure to actually make the parts, that's part of it too. Or even just local. Like we switched yeah. uh, our stickers from a Californian company to someone who is literally next door. And hey, if they can't buy the vinyl from China, neither can the California company, but just the fact that they're next door, we know who they are, we can go and talk to them, is great. So I, I, I think that a whole bunch of people are gonna realize that they are too far extended with their supply chains, they're gonna bring it in. And there's gonna be a demand for local manufacturing, um, depending on how you define local, 
Uh, I think people are going to be happy just to have it American made, but I think a lot of people are going to be looking for things next door, in the same county, in the same state, and they will be they will be picking suppliers and they will be picking clients based on geographic proximity as much as or more than the purely financial side. I will say I got a really fun email this morning um, from a Chinese manufacturer that said, hello, dear Lucas, we want to sell you things. And they gave me a list of uh, N95 masks and uh, yes. goggles and the, the scrubs and everything. And we I get emails like, like that all no, the time. Definitely not buying those from China right now. Yeah. Um, and they send me emails all the time from different. I think my email address. That's is like just, someone creating a pandemic and then so being like, "Here's the cure." Now yeah, I don't think it was those countries. specific people. Probably but, not. Probably true, not. not those specific but, people. But I, but I will but say deep is, down, like oh, I will say, it, you. it is interesting that I think my email is literally shopped around all the factories because I get an email from one of those people. Under a different name, but like all the time with like patches. I've started to get those tactical too. gear. And I'm I think wondering, they're shopping my email around. It could be that they might also be just kind of brute forcing our email. Well, they're also used to visiting our website and stealing our ideas and reproducing them. That so. too. That too. So that's I, probably I not a bot though. That's probably yeah. yeah I didn't. Sure. I didn't write back to them, although I kind of wanted to, and um, but I didn't. Yeah. I put put it on Instagram instead. But this is a very interesting point. Right now in America, we're short on masks and gowns. Not because there's not production capacity for them, because there is production capacity in China. But it takes time to get from stuff from China. They haven't had the raw materials because Wuhan is kind of a central transport hub. And so even though factories far away from Wuhan stayed open, they couldn't get stuff or they couldn't ship stuff back to the boats. So it just kind of reveals how fragile the whole system is. And is. I think that there's a lot of folks who are wanting to add some resiliency to everything. And yep. we should want to do that. Even though, uh, even if there weren't significant economic opportunities for decentralizing and making things stronger, I think it would still be the right thing to do. It would still be something that we would be pushing for as a company. And it would still be something that we're doing as a company. So the fact that there's actually going to be demand for that is something that you guys should get in on. So. It's should true. we get back to book reviews, movie recommendations? Or, We've been, uh, or, I, I, or, or, will, or are we done? I can knock, there's a couple of questions. questions here that are, that are good questions that we're getting a <laughs> lot of. I'm so surprised. No, no. <laughs> well, I'm sure some of you guys are getting tired of reading some of the bots and some of the spam. We're going to try and clean that up for you on future lives. This is all new to us, too. But a lot of you guys are asking about when certain products are coming back in stock. Uh, we're not sure, mm -hmm. and it varies from product to product. The best thing you do is email our shop, and they'll have you a quick answer. Um, but this goes back to the supply lines. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just hard to get stuff. Um, yeah. But hopefully, businesses are going to learn their lesson from this and we will be able to solidify some supply lines so that if this something like this were to happen again, we're not so affected by it. Um, yeah, so everyone has really pushed efficiency kind of yeah. to its limits at the moment. And I am, I'm all for efficiency, but you have to really think through what it is that you're losing. So for example, my fuel efficiency in my car would be way better if I did not have a spare tire, a fire extinguisher, a battery jump pack, a medical kit, et cetera. If I stripped yeah. my car down, it would get way better gas mileage, but it would actually be inefficient to not have my spare tire <laughs> if I got a flat. And so being prepared for some of these situations improves efficiency in the long run. Uh, and I think that people have gotten a little bit too focused on, on the short, the short term gains. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Quick fire Q and A super fast. When are you selling the Lucas aimbot DLC? Never. You have to earn that by working hard. Mm. Uh, 12,000 COD points. What legal stuff are you guys working on or looking into? Uh, we have a lot of different lawyers that we use for different things. And they're talking uh, about gun laws. Oh, Oh, gun laws? So, that too. This is we, an excellent question. Actually, yeah. yeah, you cover that. What we were working on before our own government got shut down. Well, we were, we're working on a bunch of stuff. We kind of shifted gears to focus on a, con a basically a constitutional carry, a permitless carry bill. We're still building relationships with folks, even though the government is shut, to try to make that happen. But uh, there's actually some interesting legal stuff happening on that front right now while the government is closed, that I will talk to you about yep. later. Uh, someone said, need an STI Staccato PTLR1 Ragnarok. Well, we actually just had a bunch of uh, Staccato guns dropped off for some holster stuff, but it's gonna be a little while testing, making some things. Uh, I'm not sure about a TLR1. Probably won't be for the TLR1. Why are you running a TLR1 on a Staccato? Why are you running a cheap, light, and inexpensive gun? I would. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, I'd say go to, if anything, we're going to make one of those for an X300. Uh, That's X300. absolutely coming, for so, sure. Yeah. And it's more, I would say it's more common for a gun that expensive. If you're already buying a $2,000 gun, you can get a more expensive light, but you can buy it from T-Rex Arms and mine it. And the prototypes are really nice. So yeah. when the full production model comes out, you'll like them. I didn't even realize we had one. Oh, but, uh, oh, oh. we're not supposed to talk about oh, We have a lot of projects. How important works, is a so. pistol light in the hierarchy of defense purchases? I'm thinking about buying an extra for a new sidecar. I'm not sure. So I'll put it this way. We just filmed a video last night, actually, at least half of it, dealing with the most important upgrade for a firearm. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but I will say that you can't shoot what you can't identify. It's mm -hmm. generally yep. a bad moral and legal uh, idea to do that. So having a weapon light on your pistol or rifle or a handheld becomes very important for that. I would so, say get the handheld first. But handheld first. So I will say I, I did right not here. think I needed a pistol light because I was pretty good at shooting one-handed with the handheld light. I completely changed my opinion the first time I tried to reload. Yep, so handheld first, and then I would say go pistol light. It does require getting a new holster, but at that point you can switch between your non-light, light, run your handheld. Yeah. I use this all the time. I'm having to switch batteries on this constantly mm -hmm. because I can actually use this. I can't draw my pistol with the light on it to, you know, walk, you know, as I'm walking through the parking lot to my car, that's a bad idea, don't do that. But I can flash this, check under my car, check around me or blind someone if need be, I which I may have possibly done a few times. I have a apologize. great flashlight parking lot um, surrounded by people story, but it'll wait yeah. for a different. Are you going to start stocking up raw materials? Yes, we already have. And we actually were before um, before this whole thing came. Believe off. it or not, we had a resiliency plan that we talked about in January. Kind of like Waffle House. But we were planning on having it up and running by the end of the year. So we ran into a we couple have, hitches. Well, and we had a few products that we, because our big thing, there's a lot of retailers out there that they will stock one of every product. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it sells, they just order another one. But they're out of stock while they wait for one more to come in. So basically, they're not having to extend their uh, money into products because they're only buying one of everything. Well, this doesn't work very well when demand starts to go up and mm -hmm. then people can't actually buy said product. We were actually sitting on a lot of inventory and we tried to on stuff. It costs us more money, but it is a better service for you guys because the stuff's actually there when yeah. you need it. So. We did that with armor prior to the pandemic. It worked out very well. It was quite a bit of uh, company assets that were sitting there for a little while. Um, that ended up working out, but we try to do that with a lot of products uh, yeah. while remaining debt free. Um, and a lot of companies, they kind of skirt, kind of like what Isaac talked about, uh, overextending themselves and being on super thin ice. And it kind of, it works provided, you know, they don't get tested, That's, but as soon as supply goes up, yeah. In the yeah. short term, it's it super work. efficient, and there are legitimate hard costs that come with carrying more inventory, but there's also inventory tax uh, in several states. Yeah. So. NFA repeal. I personally don't believe there's going to be an NFA repeal until suppressors, SBRs, let's just say those two on the NFA, uh, become normalized. Uh, the NRA has not done that. They have not done their job over the past many decades of making those types of weapons normal. Um, so I think we're, I would personally say we're probably about a decade at least out from mm -hmm, actually yeah. repealing the NFA where politicians who go in go, oh yeah, I totally shot those kinds of guns growing up. They're totally normal. It's really stupid yeah. that we have these laws on the books. Uh, we could even be as far as 20 years out, but that's not something that's going to change. Uh, I don't believe next year, I don't think it's going to change during, uh, you know, President Trump's administration, whether there's, you know, if there's another one, another four years. I mean, he banned bump stocks, for example. Yeah. I um, will say... I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. I think soon. it is It is either going to be the next generation of politicians or the one after that. And if it's not the next generation of politicians, then we haven't been working hard enough. And I'm talking about all of you guys... Not just us. Uh, this guy's saying I'm still seeing tax stamps on ammo. Yeah, the ammo that was already stamped before Bill went into effect, uh, they already had the stamps, and they're, you're just going to get rid of I'm guessing that the ammo that's on shelves now is ammo that just doesn't sell. And so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, chest rig. I'm not going to talk about that. But yes, we're working on something. <laughs> So you are going to talk very about subtle, very uh, subtle. Yeah, very subtle. Um, maybe a little sooner than you guys might think. Someone asked about our our April Spiritus restock. It hasn't hit yet. So, but we got them. When it does, okay, which will be soon, don't... it will go fast. But it, it'll it's go so go fast, fast that it's almost worth not mentioning because it's just gonna. It's true. It's true. It's actually. It's already gonna be bad. You're just, gonna, you're just gonna get people's hopes up.
Uh, That's what we do. I think. Oh, for the seven five. Um, I don't have a recommended barrel for a seven and a half yet. I think Ballistic Advantage makes one though. Seven and a half. What three hundred blackout? I think they do make one now. But I don't have Excellent. one of those. I have a. There's a another company, and I'm not gonna recommend it because we've had a lot of problems. Yeah. With it. Uh, I have a new barrel, a Seekins Precision barrel, uh, which is an eight inch, which is actually getting switched over to that gun, and then I have a Geisley Mark 14 rail, which is seven point something that's going on there. It should be pretty. I have an eight inch uh, Zev 300 black. I need to shoot. And it's that. been nice. Uh, someone just asked the pistol light thing again. Yes, I answered that. Does someone need a better trigger in their Glock to shoot faster? No. Uh, no, they need right. to get, get good. Get good. Uh, do you sell Surefire M600 light bodies? No, I don't think anybody does. Straight from Surefire, you have to buy the entire light. Uh, don't want to support anti-gun. Uh, Surefire is not an anti-gun company. Um, we don't need to talk about that right now. Um, I, I, would, I would say companies that support the Republican Party could be considered just as anti-gun as people that have donated to certain Democrats. Sure. Um, so if you're going to go by the fact that Surefire... Donated, I think, or one of their people donated. One of their people five thousand dollars. One of their people donated. My dad, in as far as donations go, to in California, that's nothing. It's nothing. Uh, if you're going to go by that principle that someone at Surefire donated to a Democrat, they are thus anti-gun. You're going to need to apply that same line of thinking to every company that has donated to the NRA, which I would also argue is anti-gun per cultural standards, and then not support anyone. So. I would yes. level that on every other company that you're talking about who support the Republican Party, uh, even potentially President Trump also, who has uh, put in more anti-gun legislation than President Obama did. I know I'm saying some really triggering things to folks. How dare you? We like to speak facts here at T-Rex Arms and try to remain consistent at the same time. That's how we'll stay on YouTube. By the way, <laughs> I was going to say, if you're complaining about a surefire while watching stuff on YouTube, well. Or on your iPhone. Or did you fill your car up with gas? Anyway. So, good question. Important, important to note, important <laughs> to note, Rand does not sponsor to be me, uh, I will, not yet. I will say, as much as we're talking about this, it is important to be principled and think about what your principles yes. should be. Yeah. But uh, it is also important to understand and try to be consistent. that one employee misstatement does not mean an entire company completely disagrees with whatever you think. Yeah, uh, best civilian IR laser. For a uh, rifle, I would. I personally like the App PLC, uh, which we have at T-Rex Arms. Um, we just restocked. Money, we, we just, just restocked. restocked. We've been selling a ton of those. Well, we're one of um, the few companies actually stock them. Because we buy a lot at a time instead of just one. Um, yes. So you got a lot. <laughs> yeah, we had quite a few. Yeah. Um, we had enough to outfit a lot of people. So go, go grab one. But uh, I think that's one of the best as far as weight, zeroing, mm. uh, the capability it has at shooting inside of 100 meters it's not a full power laser uh, grab one of those but don't buy one until you have night vision it's pretty useless until you yeah. have night vision the viz laser you're not going to see in the day i know it looks cool but get night vision first night vision is yeah. a lot cooler than just having a laser you can't use night vision capable red dot first night vision second laser later maybe um you can After answer the this one the, theorem, uh, the theorem switch back uh <laughs> yes well just the little thingies on your life do you like i mean it? i have my it's okay. So there's actually different sizes. Uh, there's based on how big your fingers are. And I didn't know that. And so mine is like made for Hulk's hand. I have um, an idea for you. I will 3D get print bigger you hands. a small yeah, one. Get, get, oh, get, get bigger yeah. hands. <laughs> get, get big. I need to game more. That's the problem. Uh, they're not bad. I like them. Uh, so yeah. Um, They're cheap. You might as well try it. Holsters for O lights. No. Will no. T Rex sell bump helmets? I can either confirm or deny. Uh, it, hang on a sec. I gotta that say that so about more stuff. It. If you just serious? say confirm or deny it. about stuff you like, I know about confirm. stuff you don't. Yeah. Honestly, I have no idea. But I like to say confirm or deny. Uh, I've ever shot an X95. You have a Tavor. I don't know if it's the it's actual. It's right over there. It's the X95. Yeah. It's actually. So there's two. Yeah. There's two different types of Tavors. There's the SAR. And then there's the X95. The X95 is the newer version with the AR controls, and it's excellent. For bull, as far as bullpups go, it's excellent. Do I prefer an AR? Absolutely. But yep. I actually took a Tavor, they call it operator's course. Uh, it was excellent. Um, IWI flew me in a couple, actually they drove us um, up to Ohio to do a full week of training on that platform specifically to learn it inside and out. And while the AR doesn't require one really it, it's it, you pick it up and you can kind of figure it yeah. out. Yeah, that class helped a ton. I took it mm -hmm. with uh, Tom Alabrando and IWI, and it was good. So, I have, a good some, gun. Uh, I have some practicality thoughts on 
the Tavor in specific and bullpups in general from, yeah. from someone, but that'll be a different one. Yeah, we'll do it. it. There are definitely some pros to running a bullpup. And there um, are some things that I would only do with a bullpup yep. because being able to use it one-handed it's true. Yes. It's a thing. It's, it's a it's, real thing. It's also Amazing. easier to put in a bag and you still have a 16 inch barrel. But moving on, because we don't need to talk about bullpups this whole time. Armor is not uh, I want to talk about bullpups. Well, you are fired. Uh, there was a great, is, again, there, there was a great that. forgotten <laughs> weapon. By the way, uh, well, he looks for a question. I already found How one. How good is our relationship? Am I allowed to fire you too? Or is that too real? You're a partner. You're allowed to fire me, yes. I guess but I mean, can. am I allowed to no, joke fire? No, you? it's me. That's all uh, me. That would be too weird. Only all right. Don't fire. take that away from Lucas. Is that, no, that's my responsibility. <laughs> um, is it worth getting my FFL and SOT to get more cool toys cheaper? The answer is no <laughs> slash yes. Uh, the ATF has really started cracking down on home-based FFLs because they started seeing a lot of people getting them strictly for hobby reasons if to they get see, around the laws. So, if they see that email or that YouTube comment, then Yeah, no. you're done. But yeah. what you, I would say is you have to, generally speaking, you have to argue to them why you need it and that it's for some form of business reason. You're either renting, selling, manufacturing, uh educational, R&D, like you have to have some reason why you're doing that. And I would say if you're going to go through all the trouble to get an SOT and pay all the money, do all that stuff, I think it's best if you have a business plan in yeah, mind to actually sure. make money doing the thing. Um, just having it to be like, I want to own whatever machine gun I want. Like we should be able to own whatever machine guns we want anyway. But if you're going to go through all this trouble with the government to do this thing, you should have a business plan attached to it. You yeah. absolutely you need should, to, but you, you they're need going to, to ask for that anyway. You need yes. to know it also opens you up, it especially does. if you're running it out of your home. It opens you up to them just basically walking in the door anytime they want. That's why so, home base is, in my opinion, a really bad you, idea. You, you should have it at a different location. You'd be better off like taking the money that you'd spend on, oh, I'm not going to recommend that life. But you'd be yeah. better off just finding a friend. Redacted. Redacted. But anyway... To have a business plan, if you're going to go through a lot of trouble, legal, paperwork, money, to have a business plan, actually, like, make some money on it, it's a good idea. Yes. Um, I'll be shocked if you still have the Second Amendment in 10 years. Well, I would, honestly, I would agree with you, uh, you know, not having the Second Amendment in 10 years, and that's why it falls on us to keep it alive culturally. Um, that's one reason why I really like video games that have realistic depictions of weapons, because it gets a lot of people into firearms. Yeah. That's why I got into guns. Um, so, like, latest Call of Duty. Really like that. I've talked about it uh, at the start of this uh, stream um, because it does get young people into guns, mm -hmm. and they are the next generation who, in if they're playing the game right now at age 16, in 10 years from the Second Amendment, kind of what you're saying, they'll be 26, they'll be my age, and they'll be buying guns, getting into guns, and the more gun owners we have who have guns, especially stuff like this, and it's not like just FUD guns, um, they're the people that are going to resist legislation that comes down going, you can't have 30 round mags. You can't have suppressors. You can't have assault rifles. Um, and I would say it's not just the people who resist the legislation. It is legislators. That too. Mm -hmm. that there too. are a bunch of young legislators in Tennessee who are hardcore Second Amendment supporters. Yep. One of the yep. things that I have seen over my life, because I'm very old, I have seen the Republican and Democratic Party both move to the left, but drift apart from each other dramatically. We are seeing far, far divergence. So the next generation of politicians, I think are gonna be way further to the left and way further to the right. Uh, so there's tremendous hope here. If we weigh in on these issues, we help normalize stuff. We help get uh, people who understand the constitution elected. Um, there are some great folks who could actually be in office in that time frame to support these stuff. Comments are, so. Wow, these comments are, wow, we're getting a lot of comments. These, some of these are seven minutes old. Uh, real fast, we're never, I don't want to say never, I don't like, only a Sith deals in absolutes. <coughs> I don't like absolutes, but I highly doubt we will ever make holsters for O-Lights. Uh, don't think so, not worth it. Uh, paint or don't paint, yes, you should paint. Uh, VP9X300, don't know, that'd be a question for you. Ragnarok. Uh, why do you like the MCX? I really like the MCX. Um, short pistons not. Uh, my MCXs have been great. Uh, actually working on a video on that for you guys. Uh, M13 stuff, for those of you that know. Um, 
Uh, wow. PCC is mm -hmm. great for competition, not necessarily as good for uh, more practical reasons. The would, only time I would run mm -hmm. one would be a tiny gun like this. Like a 16-inch PCC, in my opinion, is pretty stupid. I would uh, say they can be good for practice, too. Yeah, and it's a little cheaper to shoot with, but a 16-inch PCC, in my opinion, is pretty dumb. If you're already going to that size, just get a 5.56 five, and do like a 14.5 or a 16. Now, I will say we might want to revisit that question after we figure out what ammo prices are in the future. Yeah. Uh, Lucas, you mentioned another live stream, you're a firefighter or a paramedic. Is that true? Yes, I was a volunteer firefighter for a little bit. Isaac actually was on the same uh, department as well. We ran a bunch of calls together. Yeah, it was, it, was, awesome. it was a lot of fun. I've actually thought about doing it again. Uh, there's some other stuff that we've been talking about doing uh, as far as that goes. And now you put out fires at T-Rex. Well, I've put out a lot of fires at T-Rex. We <laughs> start fires at T-Rex. So we start them too. Yeah, Drew starts a lot. <laughs> and I'm the one that gets fired. Dad yeah. joke. I got him. Uh, Full circle. Um, Pick out a couple more. Uh, then, do you recommend wearing soft armor behind plates? It's good practice. Depends <clears throat> on what armor you have. A lot of good plates nowadays are standalone, so you don't have to have soft behind it. Uh, originally, when they made certain hard plates, they required having a soft uh, backer, uh, 3A backer behind it to kind of level it up to level four. Um, not so much of an issue with the newer ones. Um, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, no, man, more Olight. I feel like people on YouTube love Olight more than people on Instagram. What are you trying to do? What are you doing? I was trying to write something on there. No, send you a secret uh, note, but... Oh, no. You just uh, have to whisper it so, yeah. to his wireless microphone. <laughs> well, I think that I think that can about sum up the, the live. We definitely are thinking about, obviously, doing these weekly. I think the plan is we are doing them next Wednesday. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. At like four? I thought it was four thirty. That's why. Uh, well, we're we're gonna do them. Late, <laughs> well, well, we split the difference. Four fifteen. It worked out very well. Um, but yeah, four is kind of the time we're doing. We'll do. It. We'll do. We'll do the next one at four. We're not promising that we're gonna do these always and forever, but next week Wednesday four p.m. we'll do something. We'll do something. It might be gun related. It might be in the gun room again. It might be in here in this cool uh, in this cool room where we got lots of stuff going on. Um, we're not sure, but you guys feel free to. Um, you know, I guess let us know in the comment section down here Absolutely. what you guys would uh, like to see. Podcasts, we've talked about more live streams. We've talked about getting other people on these live streams. We could even do one with, well, the camera guys are actually running the stream right now, but potentially get them to run over here, talk about cameras, uh, head I would back love over that. there. I would take a break. And then just talk about whatever. And then gun questions as well. Maybe a night vision uh, stream talking about some of that. Get some gear out here, some different yeah. uh, sets, different There's lasers options, and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, we're also still trying to produce more YouTube content. We filmed a video last night. We have a video in the works right now that may be able to go up this Saturday. It just dated the video. Um, we're trying to get a video out every week. On top of all the content we do on our social media, which you guys can follow, uh, at Trex Arms. These are Instagram for the company, which is obviously where a lot of stuff happens. I've got my personal, Lucas Trex Arms. Isaac's got his. Isaac Trex Arms. And Drew, the rebel, is just Drew Hopkins. He's not allowed to have a Trex Arms account, actually. <laughs> You'd have, to, you'd have to buy my account before I turned it into that. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I know you got well, the money. Challenge accepted. <laughs> uh, so you guys can follow us there on social media and actually watch stuff throughout the week as it happens. Um, this is actually the first live we did where we did not announce it ahead of time on Instagram, isn't it? I did, did, oh, did like a couple minutes before. Okay. No, well, well, this will okay. be interesting metric. Interesting, interesting but, yeah. test then. So yeah. everybody at home, quarantine and don't chill. Apply your mind to stuff. Figure out what you want to improve in. Build your skill sets. Add stuff to your tool bag. Get ready for the future. That sounds good.